The following question reads that a 0.17 gram sample of group 14 chloride XCl4 reacted with water to produce an oxide XO2 and HCl. And they've given you an equation. We don't know what X is. What we just simply know is that it's a, it's a group 14 chloride. That's the only information that's provided. It then reads that uh, the HCl produced was absorbed in 100 cm cube or 0.1 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide and excess. So here is the HCl that has been produced reacting with the excess NUH. And I can uh, tell you exactly what amount of uh, NUH that's being uh, used in this reaction. It's 100 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube uh, NUH. Uh, what we can do over here is we can use the formula uh, N is equal to C into V, which is concentration multiplied by volume, gives you moles. Uh, and over here, the volume should be in dm cube, so it's uh, 0 0.1 decimeter cube. So the moles that you're going to have, the, the moles of NOH that are added over here, it's going to be 0 0.01 moles. So you're reacting the HCl produced by 0 0.01 moles of NOH, which is in excess, which basically means that some of this NOH will not react or would be left over. So I did N is equal to C into V concentration multiplied by volume, concentration multiplied by volume, which should be in dm cube, divided by 1000, I got 0 0.01 moles. In the next part, in a titration, the unreacted NOH, so the NOH that is left over from, from this uh, previous reaction is now being, uh, this unreacted NOH is now being reacted or required 30 cm cube 0.2 mole per dm cube HCl acid for complete neutralization. So what's happening is that the unreacted NOH that did not get used uh, up in the previous reaction is now again being reacted with the HCl and you're given the volume and the concentration of this uh, HCl solution. So I can I can use the formula again, concentration multiplied by volume and figure out and figure out the amount of HCl that would be that is being used in this uh, in this titration over here. So it's 30 cm cube into 0.2 and this should be divided by 1000. So my answer comes out to be so it's coming out to be 0 0.00 six moles so that is the amount of HCl that uh, is required to finish off the unreacted NOH in the previous step so uh, we just need to solve uh, already I've already uh, solved some of the parts so now what we're going to do is we're going to solve the uh, the complete uh, question going step by step the first part option is you need to calculate the amount in moles of HCl used in the titration to neutralize the unreacted NOH so this unreacted NOH over here, I've already done the calculation. I've figured out that the amount of HCl that's being used for that unreacted NOH is 30 cm cube into 0.2 mole per dm cube. I just need to, I just need to add the working over here. So 30, uh, 0.3, uh, 30 divided by 1000 dm cube multiplied by 0.2 mole per decimeter cube. My answer comes out to be 0. Point, uh, double zero six. And uh, zero zero moles. Now moving on to the next part, uh, part B. Uh, we now asked to uh, in part B we are asked to write the equation for the reaction between HCl and NaOH. So it's a simple reaction between an acid and a base producing salt and water. So I've written it down. So HCl plus NaOH produces NaCl and H2O. Uh, what uh, is important is that you must realize that the ratio between HCl and NaOH in the equation is 1 ratio 1. So the amount of moles of HCl in the previous step that we recorded over here, the amount of moles of HCl and the amount of moles of NaOH, it must be the same. And this is exactly what is being asked in the next step. You're supposed to calculate the amount in moles of NaOH neutralized by the titration. So going back um, to uh, going back to the first part over here, you will notice that uh, the HCl at the end was being uh, that that was being used in titration was being used to react with the unreacted NOH from the previous step. So the amount of moles of HCl, HCl and NOH have one ratio one in the equation. It's one ratio one. So if, if HCl has 0 0.006 moles, NOH is also going to have exactly the same amount of moles. So the answer to that is going to be, and you're going to show some working as well in this particular part part c moving to the next part of the question part d we are now asked to calculate the amount in moles of NOH that reacted with the hcl 
produced by the reaction in equation 1. So let's go back and have a look. Uh, remember, now he's basically asking us uh, that the HCl that was produced in reaction 1 or equation 1, this HCl over here, reacted with, it, with NaOH. And that NaOH was in excess. And we also did some calculation. We figured out that the HCl produced was absorbed in 100 cm cube of 0.1 mole per decimeter cube NaOH, which was in excess. And using the formula concentration multiplied by volume, we were able to figure out 0 0.01 moles of NaOH uh, was, in uh, was, uh, was being used in this reaction. And then you had this unreacted NaOH that was uh, left over. And that was then reacting with 0 0.006 moles of HCl. Now, based on a previous calculation, uh, using HCl's moles, we were able to figure out the unreacted moles of NOH, which were coming out to be 0 0.006 moles. And uh, now, this is the unreacted NOH or the leftover NOH. Remember, we added 0 0.01 moles of NOH in excess initially. So, be using these two values, this value and the unreacted NOH, and going back to the question, so this is what we have. Uh, this is the excess NOH that we added initially in equation 1, which is 0 0.01 moles. Then you had leftover NOH, which was neutralized by titration. That NOH came out to be the leftover NOH was 0 0.006 moles. So what was the amount of NOH that actually reacted in equation 1? You're going to subtract the two values. This is the amount that you added, and this is the amount that is leftover. And if you subtract the two values, it's going to be 0 0.01 minus 0 0.00. 6 and your answer is going to be so on my calculator this value comes out to be equal to 4 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles so that is the amount let's go back so that is the amount uh, that uh, I'm going to I'm going to put 4 into 10 raised power minus 3 moles over here so that is the amount of moles of anyways that actually took part in the reaction not the excess amount uh, but the part uh, but the amount that took part in the reaction so let's go back and have a look on the next part of the question which is we now need to calculate the amount in moles of HCl produced by the reaction in equation 1 so according to our equation we still know that NOH and HCl react in one ratio one which is they react in equal ratio so going back to uh, uh, our original equation. So the HCl that is produced in this reaction reacted with this amount of NOH and I, I know that the ratio is the same. Although this is a separate equation but the HCl that is produced in this reaction and the amount of NOH that's reacting with it it's going to have one ratio one. So the amount of moles of HCl would be exactly the same. It's going to be 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 moles. So this is what we are going to add over there. Uh, so the amount would be 4 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles. So that is the amount of HCl that is produced in equation 1. And in the next part, part F, you now need to calculate the amount in moles of HCl4 in the original sample. So let's go back to our reaction. And we have reached this part. We figured out that uh, the amount of moles of HCl are, uh, we are now known it's 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 moles. So using this amount, we can figure out the moles of XCL4. And you can notice that the ratio is 4. 4 HCLs are produced by 1 XCL4. So it's 4 ratio 1. So if it's 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 moles of HCL, then the amount of XCL4 that would be required for producing that according to this ratio would be 1 into 10 raised to power minus 3 moles. Because it's a 1 ratio 4 in the equation. So 4 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles would be produced by 1 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles of XCL4. So let's go back and answer our question. So I've uh, copied the ratio. HCL and XCL4 have a ratio of 4 ratio 1. So 4 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles, uh, X would come out to be equal to 1 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles. So we're done with this part. We've figured out the moles of XCL4. And we also know the mass. So in the next part, calculate the molecular MR of XCL4. So we're going to use, we can use the formula moles is equal to mass divided by MR. And uh, the MR is unknown, but we know the sample's mass, which is 0.17 grams. It's given over here. 
and we also know its moles. So what we're going to do is we're going to make MR the subject of the equation. So it's going to be mass, which is 0.17 grams, divided by the amount in moles, which is 1 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles. So using this, we would be able to calculate the MR, which comes out to be equal to 170 based on this calculation over here. And uh, the next part, part H, is... You need to calculate the relative atomic mass ER of X and suggest its identity. We know that, uh, so far what we know is that the MR of X CL4 is 170. It's given over here in the last part. So the MR of X CL4 is 170, which basically means the MR is basically the sum of the atomic masses or the ARs. X is unknown. There are four chlorines, which is going to be 4 times 35.5 which is the AR of chlorine, and that should sum up, sum up and be equal to 170. And using this, we can uh, make X the subject of the equation, and X value of X would come out to be. So it's, uh, according to my calculator, it's coming out to be equal to 28. So the AR of X is 28. Uh, what you just need to do is now look at the periodic table and find what is found at, uh, at proton number or AR atomic mass sorry of 28 and the answer would come out to be equal to, uh, it's going to be silicon silicon is the is the element that has an ar of 28